Hello YouTubers, welcome to Holpole's YouTube channel. It's Holpole speaking. Welcome to a rather bleak springtime day here in South East Queensland, Australia. And today we're going to, I'm just going to do a quick review of the latest Hatton's specially commissioned locomotive, which arrived from Hatton's yesterday. And it is, of course, as most of you will probably know, the Metrovic Class 28 Kobo. But it's not this one I'm showing you now. This is the Silver Fox version. The Heljan one is just coming around in the background there. There she goes. I'll pull her up in a minute. And we'll just have a look at a few of the detail differences. And I'll give you my opinion on the um, this latest acquisition from Hatton's. And uh, I must say, they're being very bold in commissioning these engines. They must have to put up a lot of money. And uh, I really do hope it pays off for them. So she's just coming around the corner now. And as she comes around, I'll pull her up. Here she comes. Come on, a bit further. There we are, you can see her in all her glory now. And there's the two, the uh, Silver Fox one on the right hand side, the new Helgen Kobo on the left. Uh, complete with lights, which you'll see when I show you a few shots of it circling the layout. Unfortunately, we seem to always have to start these things with a, a, on a sour note. And the sour note is that unfortunately, um, whoever was responsible for it at the factory in China, um, they are in actual fact wired up the wrong way. So when you press your controller forward, she goes backwards and vice versa. Um, so not very good there. Um, if you're brave enough to take the top off, and according to the leaflet that comes with it, um, you take two credit card sized bits of cardboard and you can, or something a bit stronger, and, and gently lever the body off. So one might have to bite the bullet on that. On the good points, she is very heavy and very quiet of course, as is the, as is the want of these modern day locomotives, and seems to be very powerful. Now the, the uh, pamphlet does say it can haul, it's been tested with 15 coaches. Well I'm not going to do that, I've just got a light um, freight on it, but it does run very smoothly and gives the impression that it could quite easily haul uh, a long load like that. As you can see the detail is very nicely defined and then uh, especially the underbody work there, the uh, fuel the fuel tanks and uh, battery containers, uh, some white piping there, I'm not quite what, sure what that is. But while the other thing it does highlight really is that this guy, Silver Fox, who's had most of his work taken away from him now by all these special commissions, actually did quite a good job um, in what must be rather, you know, I hope this is not too derogatory, but probably a, a, a more of a backyard operation than a, a large factory in China. And as you can see, he has done quite a good job on it. Probably the thing that spoils the uh, Silver Fox one more than the other, of course, is those, uh, it's, it's based on an a old Lima chassis and uh, it's got those horrible, big, ugly um, Hornby couplings there. It'd be lovely to be, a rep uh, be able to replica replicate, I beg your pardon, that Condor uh, freight train, that, uh, the container train that uh, BR are hopefully going to get launched in the um, early 60s there, never really got going, um, but I haven't got enough uh, wagons to be able to make up a decent trade load unfortunately. So we'll have to be content with this load of old Great Western um, bits and bobs um, trailing behind it, but it will give you a rough idea of how it performs. All in all, it's. It, I think overall, if I give it points out of 10, I would say 9 out of 10 and only losing one point because of that error at the factory. 
Must make uh, Christine Hatton tear her hair out, I'd say, after they forked out all that money. Okay, let's get her going. And I'll slowly turn the controller and away she goes. Very slowly, you can get that control down even on DC, very slowly. Oh, up and away. And I'll show you some more shots and I'll put the old uh, the Silver Fox one on another train and we can see there if there's any differences in performance. I'm pretty sure the Silver Fox one won't be so nice and smooth as the Helljan one. The other thing of course is that uh, once again they've very kindly fitted all that detrius on the front of the buffer beam, all the bits and bobs, but um, you have to chop some of them off if you want your, your loco to go around some of those um, horrible curves that all of us have got on our layouts. Pity really, but um, I guess it's better to cut them off and cut off what you don't want than to, um, <coughs> to be able to try and fit all those things on the buffer beam yourself, which, you know, when you're getting on a bit in years, it can be a bit difficult, I can tell you, with your eyesight and one thing or the other. Anyway, I'll sign off now. I think overall I'd encourage you all to, if you can afford it, to go out and buy one and support happens in these ventures. Incidentally, I've just heard on the grapevine that um, the National Rally Museum are, um, have, have commissioned Bartman to do the Midland compound in uh, red, so yoo-hoo! If you've got £140 to spare, of course.